Now we'll have a talk about tones. Tones can be very confusing, but I've simplified it. I simplified it down to, let's just think about three colours, red, blue and yellow. And by the way, many times when I'm looking at crimson, I call it red, or burnt sienna, I call it red, because they're the reds in our landscape. Often a yellow will be yellow, I call raw sienna yellow also, because that's the yellows in our landscape. And the blues are all blue. Now, let's kid we're making a landscape with some little trees. Let's, oh, we'll have some mountains. We'll have some lovely mountains. There's the mountains. Okay. And here we are. There's our eye level. Not that it matters. And here we are standing here. And we're big. Okay, that's us. Okay. Now, between there and us, there's a lot of air. And as the colours go through the air, and they get to here, or here, or here, right down here, say, they all mute into the same colour, here. And on a normal day, that colour can't be anything but grey. Because red and blue and yellow mixed together make grey. It might be a brown grey, or a red grey, or a blue grey, or a green grey, or a purple grey, but it is grey and that's the colour there. Often it looks very blue. So here we have a bright red, we have a bright blue and a bright yellow. When they get there they're all grey, so when you get halfway between here and there they can't still be this bright red. They are red grey, blue grey and yellow grey. They are not the same colour as what's here. If you want to paint your landscape successfully, you must not put this colour halfway between you and the mountains. That's all there is to it. If you want to paint successful landscapes, you exaggerate the perspective and you exaggerate the tones to make things look further away. So the more colour, the more red or the more green or the more yellow, you add to this middle colour, you are lessening the perspective or the three-dimensional look of your painting. So try and find a happy medium where it doesn't look too pale and it doesn't look too bright, but it looks just right. Now, here is a bright green leaf right in front of you. These colours a bright green when they're right in front of your face. When they move away from you, they'll end up the same colour as down here. They'll end up grey, blue, very pale, possibly the same colour as the sky. When they're halfway, they're not green anymore. So we might use a green up here that holds a lot of this colour, but down here it holds just a little tiny bit it fades very quickly. When it's close to you, it's very green. Okay, that's obvious. When it gets to there, it's not so green. That's halfway between you and the mountains. When it gets to the mountains, it's pale grey, or it's the same blue as the sky. When it's here, when it's close to you, it's reflecting all the lights. The lights, there might be a yellow flower next to here, this leaf will also have yellow in it because the light's reflected on the ear. But when it gets down to here, halfway between you and the mountain, all those reflected lights are gone. It's just one dull, boring colour. And that's it. The colour can change. Okay, so it should be obvious now to you that dark greens are here, pale greys are here, and a grey there with a little bit of that dark green is halfway between you and the mountain goes away from you like that. Now there's other things involved. There's different times of day, morning, noon and night. Often people say ultramarine blue in the morning, cobalt blue in the middle of the day and Prussian blue at night. Okay, that's a good enough rule. In the middle of the day you've got cadmium yellow, cadmium red and at night time you might have lemon yellow and crimson and in the morning you might have vermilion which is almost orange and, um, and uh, chrome yellow or something like that anyway. But the thing is, when you're mixing your colours between here 
and there. You should use all the same colours. If this comes through here and you've got a bit of a red day, you've got a bit of a red colour here and the red coming through here and there's a bit of a red here, you don't pick up a purple and paint your trees here unless you're painting ornamental pictures. If you're painting ornamental pictures, you can put whatever you like in them. But if you want to paint landscapes properly, you need to use what is called a limited palette. And the limited palette is you make your mind up what colour it's going to be, cobalt blue, Prussian blue or ultramarine blue, and you use those colours right through your painting. So if you use Viridian Green, you use this green here, you do need a tint of it right back here near the mountains. It's no good just stopping the Viridian Green there, you do need it right through everything as it comes towards you, as the trees come towards you. You need these tones. So the whole picture has the same tone all the way through it. You can't stop halfway and have a different tone there. I know we do it, we do it all the time, it looks terrific, but it's not the way to do it. Okay, you've got a cobalt blue day. Use cobalt blue right through to here. You can use cathalo blue in your sky because cathalo blue and cobalt blue are so much similar it doesn't make any difference. Uh -huh. So we work on what is called a limited palette. And the limited palette will have your red, your blue, your yellow. You put them together and you need a colour like the soil. And of course if there's a purple tree there you might need some purple to go in there. But your tones all made out of those colours right through your painting. When we get to here, you need to get your yellow down to a very musty looking grey yellow. That's why we use raw sienna. It's so much easier. So, burnt sienna for the ground at your feet, raw sienna for the yellow when it gets that far, and all the other colours are the same, and the viridian green it is for these. Okay.